Hey everybody, welcome back to Leosophy. Um, this is the second of the Prepper series. Really, it's the third, but it's the second deep dive. So, what I'm going to be talking about today is food. Talked about water last time. Stands the reason that what you'd follow it would be food. And water is a lot more simplistic. You know, there's there's filters, there's the live straw, there's digging wells. It's all very basic because water is very basic. And having access to potable, clean water is a basic need. One that we've gotten very accustomed to. But food's a little different. Because food is a broad thing. You know, one, you have to concern yourself with how many calories you're getting. Then you have to concern yourself with getting the proper macros, carbs, proteins, and fats. And then you have to concern yourself with getting the right micros, that is to say, not dying from malnutrition. And unfortunately, there's no silver bullet for that because people live in different parts of the world, and as a result, they have access to very different micronutrients. Again, we live in an age where you can get food from all over the world very quickly, and additionally, you can supplement your diet with vitamins, and additionally, where you live affects not only what kind of micronutrients you get, but it can even affect how readily you can absorb those nutrients because you know your diet's going to affect that and other things genetically can affect that but it's kind of taboo to talk about anymore. But the one thing that you definitely need to be aware of is that it goes in tears. If you're not getting enough calories, that's a bigger issue than not getting enough zinc, for example, because you can go a long time deficient in certain things but you can't go very long again it's that that rule of three three weeks without food you're going to enter starvation mode and that's going to depend also depending on the amount of adipose tissue you have so there are some basic things you could you should be aware of one if you live in an area where hunting is permitted or feasible then you shouldn't just focus on, a, I see this a lot, you know, the, the mall ninja mentality. You know, they, they have like a 223 and they call it a day. You should absolutely have a, a hunting rifle. Uh, you should actually have different ones. I recommend having um, a very low caliber rifle, like like a 22 or a, uh, well, actually, that's the big one, the, the, especially the Ruger 1022. Anyway, the point where I'm going with this is that. We tend to think about acquiring food in a survival situation in one of two ways. Either stockpiling MREs, which I do actually recommend, just very differently from how most people do it, and we'll get on that later, or taking down big game and just feasting and, and just back and forth. But really, time and time again, we're proven from survival situations that that's not usually how people acquire calories. They usually don't just go in the woods and bag a deer, a bighorn sheep, or a buffalo, and, you know, eat on that for weeks. Usually, it's actually about acquiring small amounts of food. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to grow up in an area where squirrels are not a taboo thing to eat at all, and uh, 410s and 22s are both used to bring down squirrel, and it's considered normal. What I mean is, you're going to need to concern yourself with getting small amounts of food. Fishing, of course, having fishing equipment is very important, too. Uh, I would actually argue it's more important because uh, a bad day at fishing properly, and that includes using like a trot line and stuff, not just rod and reel, um, is usually going to be more productive than a bad day at hunting, which is often a zero-sum game. Additionally, when it comes to stockpiling food, I, I do encourage that. But just not, again, we're not talking about Teotihuacan or, or any of the, the more quote-unquote outlandish views. Again, not disparaging these views. I'm just saying, you know, if you want to prepare for general problems, just up your pantry game. I talked about it in a previous video. Rice is very good for that. Um, keeping flour in airtight containers where they don't get uh, spoilage from both oxidation and uh, different critters. Um, I'm trying to think is that beetle called? I think it's actually called a pantry beetle or a flower beetle, larder beetle, something like that. These are common problems. Basically, tenebrionidae, the, the mealworm family, they, they tend to uh, infest 
high carb long sitting things like flour and rice and things of that sort I've, I've seen it happen personally it's not something you want you don't want that to take place you don't want moisture or excess oxygen to get in and spoil your your goods but having a good pantry game is really important it's one of the reasons why Mormons and the Japanese when when disaster tends to strike you know we saw it actually in in real time when um, 2011 I think it was maybe yeah 2011 um, uh, Fukushima a lot of people ended up a lot better off than I expected and the reason for this was it was just commonplace that again having a good pantry in Japan is common they had a lot of rice they had tinned fish they had uh, root vegetables that keep a long time and so again these, these people weren't preppers these people didn't have MREs. These people didn't have, uh, you know, stockpiles of ammunition or, or fire starters. It was just a normal aspect of, of life that you should be able to be ready for disaster. So it was normal to have stockpiles of rice, stockpiles of tinned fish, things that you need in those kinds of situations. It was also, it, it still is, it's commonplace, even little girls over there. They know how to start a little bonfire and cook dinner over a bonfire. Do you, do your kids if you have them. Uh, things that used to be common skills are quickly being viewed as extreme or crazy and uh, written off. And some of that is because of the people who are screaming that Jesus is coming back. And you need to have, you know, 80 kilos of MREs and five metric tons of sardines in your basement uh, along with enough uh, 203s or 5.56 rounds to take down a small country and I'm not saying you shouldn't have these things I'm saying that being ready for an emergency doesn't have to revolve around this uh, Nat Geo or Discovery the reality TV portrayal which even includes the YouTube portrayal of people who are, are prepared the prepper idea. It, it's gotten to a point where I almost think that's a slur. Well, TLDW, if you live in a country where hunting is normalized, have hunting supplies for a variety of different game animals. If you live in a country, and you almost certainly do in this case, where fishing is normalized, get good at fishing and have the proper equipment for such things. And if you live anywhere in the world have a steady supply of pantry dried carbohydrates whatever you're comfortable with uh, and learn how to cook with them properly because that's another thing people don't talk about at all and that is fatigue uh, you, people have this mentality of I'll just eat buttered noodles forever no you won't after about a week of buttered noodles you will get sick of it you'll eat less and less of it your body will start saying well, let's not eat these buttered noodles and you will slowly but surely uh, most likely starve before you succumb to the malnutrition that comes with just eating butter noodles. Additionally, I'm not big on vitamins, but it is something where you might want to have a little bit stockpiled. But more than anything, and this is a biased view, but I can think of nothing better to learn in terms of self-improvement or just spending your time and I'm biased because I love this personally but learn to grow food if you have the means if you have the means and most people do if you have a tiny little plot in front of your home if you even if you live in an apartment learn how to grow things um, in little pots and stuff like that there are, there are apartment complexes in big cities where people are learning to do this and they're having little communal gardens uh, where you know one person in you know in unit 613 is growing tomatoes and person in unit you know 518 is growing um, kale and then they ha they get together and they they swap uh, food that's something you're seeing in apartments in big cities which is probably not my audience but I don't know so if they can do that then learning how to grow things is very important it's it's probably the best way it won't give you enough calories to survive a, even a day really unless you're just gorging yourself like those vegan youtubers with greens but 
it will supplement your diet with adequate nutrients and that's important. You can get your calories from meat and, and pantry carbs but you need to get micronutrients from elsewhere and also it will make your diet vary enough where you won't succumb to that fatigue because if you have tomatoes, if you have potatoes, if you have squash you can switch things up a little bit and your body will appreciate it and your mind will even appreciate it in the form of not having that fatigue. So, yeah. Like, share, subscribe, keep asking questions. Bye.